Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. I got a lot of requests for uh, racket comparisons. So I'm gonna do head 98 range rackets today. I might do a lot more of these in the future. Please comment below which rackets would you like me to compare the most? Which kind of category or which rackets kind of one racket compared with the other would you like to see? And I'll read all those comments and I'll try to get to do it uh, when I get time. So uh, today I just wanted to talk about 98 square inch rackets from head. There are five, there are four on this table. Uh, the Radical is not here at the moment, so, uh, but I'll get to the Radical Pro, but the Radical MP is also uh, a part of these five 98 square inch rackets. And what are 98 square inch rackets? Uh, they are more for the advanced player. Generally, I would say upper level intermediate to advanced. If you're talking the NTRP scale, which I use a lot, which is like one to seven, where beginner is one and pro is seven. I would say when if you're at 4.0 and upwards, these rackets work well for you. Any 3.5s, I would generally recommend to use a little bit more of a forgiving racket, like a 100 square inch racket or even more like a 100, 200, 4. Some players still prefer 98 because they are a little bit more maneuverable and you have a bit more control. But overall, that's a recommendation that I support. Uh, if we look at um, the different characteristics of the racks and the different specs, they are quite similar. So I think that's why uh, these comparisons might be useful because if you look at head, they have the most rackets of any manufacturer out there on the market. And they, they, just, they just released and introduced a new silo uh, and called Boom. So they have the Boom MP, I think they have the Boom Team as well. But the Boom Pro here is the 98 screen racket more tailored towards advanced players and actually a few of my uh, you know advanced playing friends uh, have decided to make, make a switch to this one actually one of the, the better players in Sweden uh, who, who used to use an old uh, IG prestige pro stock he's, he's now using this frame so I was quite uh, interesting to hear that and I've also met other players that actually like this frame a lot I'm uh, enjoying this frame but I'm not a hundred percent convinced for my personal uh, preference, but I'm gonna you know give you my opinions. But if we talk about power levels, first of all, Head has introduced a CPI scale, a power scale, so uh, that will give you an indication of how much for free you get with each racket. So the power scale goes from 100 to 1000, where 1000 is the most powerful and 100 is the least powerful. I don't think they have a racket that's a 100, and uh, that would be a mid size frame probably, uh, but they don't have that anymore. But they have 200 and um, here's a 200, it's the Prestige Pro 2021. Um, if you were a fan of the old Prestige MP, this is the same racket pretty much with Oxetic technology, slightly uh, a slight difference. But overall this racket is the most low power powered of the 98s and you need to have a pretty advanced game to use this, probably more than I have, uh, although I do really like this frame a lot, very plush feel pretty heavy, 320 grams unstrung, so it's the heaviest of the bunch here. And, uh, but it gives you really, really, it gives you excellent precision, uh, super confidence when you're hitting and going for your shots, and especially if you're going for smaller margins, lines, and so on. Uh, the beam is thin, it's 20 millimeter beam, so that's quite, um, quite a standout here, but also is a standout with all these other and 98 square inch rackets from head is that this is an 1820. So this is actually two extra cross strings and one extra main string. So a tighter pattern for more control, obviously less spin potential, less liveliness in the string bed. But for you who, who was very advanced player who value feel and precision above all else, I think the prestige is your main friend here. Next in line, the Radical Pro, um, also CPI 200. Not sure if that is uh, what I would give it. I would probably give it 250 if I could or 300 maybe because I think it is a bit more powerful than this one. The beam is still quite thin, like both of these rackets have very thin beams, but this one is not as, uh, you know, as 20 millimeter throughout. It has a slightly different beam thickness as we move around the frame. And um, the beam profile here is thin, but a little bit more aerodynamic, a little bit more spin friendly and a little bit more powerful. So the stiffness of this one is 65 listed by Tennis Warehouse and that's 65 strong. And the thing with that is that um, radical rackets over the years uh, before graphene were pretty, pretty soft, pretty flexible. Uh, I think most racket purists prefer those to the newer radicals. 
the newer radicals are a little bit stiffer. This one came kind of in between the new and the old of the radicals. It's still uh, pretty stiff, but it's not harsh. Uh, so you get good feel, but it's not maybe as plush as some of the older radicals, for example, that are pretty popular. So a um, little bit more power, but not quite that plush feel. Uh, so that's up to you. I know many guys who love the new radicals, and I would prefer the Radical Pro out of the two radicals, but I know several that prefers the MP. And the MP is pretty much just a, a lighter version of this with a slightly different beam thickness. Uh, so it is lighter, but it has still quite good mass in the head, the MP. So you, even though it's only 300 grams, and this is 315 unstrung, the Pro, uh, the Pro has more weight in the handle, um, and the MP has a bit more weight compared to this one in the head. So uh, easier to swing uh, the MP, easier to use, but still pretty solid frame. Uh, with, with a pretty decent swing weight at 3 to 5-ish. Next up, after the MP, so we have the Prestige Pro, the Radical Pro, the Radical MP, and starting with the low power, going up to the higher power, uh, sounds like a Travis Scott song, and um, then we have the Boom Pro. When I heard of the Boom release, when I started testing the Boom Pro, I thought it was going to be and actually was more powerful than the Extreme Tour. I mean, the name Boom gives you that feeling that this is going to be a powerful frame. After testing it for quite a long time now, side by side by my beloved and customized Extreme Tour, I think this is actually slightly lower powered. But it's, it's very, very close. Like this one, the stiffness ratings are very similar. The, the beam profiles are quite similar. What's different with the B Boom Pro is that it has this morph beam, which is kind of like an Yonex isometric, so it's kind of flat up here, and it has more of a gravity style teardrop shape frame. So it does feel like the sweet spot of this frame, the margin for error you have in the string bed is bigger. So uh, definitely a little bit more forgiving racket, pretty spin friendly. I feel like the string bed is livelier here, it's a little bit less um, consistent than the Extreme Tour, that's my personal take. Uh, despite being lower powered, according to the CPI, this being 400, this being 500, uh, I feel like this one is a little bit livelier. And that has been my main peeve with this one. Otherwise, I really like it. It's very fast, solid, stable. It's not the best feeling racket of all time, but it has a good feel to it, you know. So, so it's actually a really nice racket. Probably that's why some of my friends have made a switch, but just can't quite uh, groove with the with the, the lack of consistency in the string bed at times. I, I think, uh, I'm not alone in this, I've talked to my to a, a bottom of mine who's a better player than I am and he, he said the same thing, but he still uses this for coaching and stuff because he likes the racket so much. So uh, if you would play matches on the highest of level, maybe that would be a, a problem with, with the control, but if you're playing on my level or, or slightly higher or slightly lower, I think you'll be fine with the Boom Pro. It's a, it's a good racket and it's a bit more forgiving than the Extreme Tour. And then we have the Extreme Tour, and this is the ninth edition. It's not uh, the standard lime green one. Uh, I really love this frame. I've been using it quite a lot. I haven't made any official switches, which is tough. I know you ask me, like, do you, do you play this one now, or do you play with the TF40, the new one, which I also very, very much like. Uh, and I'm in two, two minds now, so I'm kind of in a phase where I'm playing with the ball machine, testing, trying to make up my mind so I at, at least have one frame for uh, the rest of the season. That would be the plan for me, since I'm going to travel a lot for tennis and do, do stuff, hopefully. So, but this one um, is the most powerful of the bunch, slightly more powerful than the Boom. Um, and, um, but still, I felt like the, the stability, and this is perhaps why they made the Boom the way they did it, with the, with the morph beam and that the slightly different um, shape of the head is that this one does lack a little bit of stability in stock form. I felt like it's not quite as stable as it could be. I think that they could have been a slightly heavier and that's why I've added around 5 grams in the handle here with some lead tape and around 2 grams at 12 because I want a little bit beefier, a little bit higher swing weight. It depends of course on the quality control of the racket you get but generally this has been the case for the extreme tours that they, they need weight. Um, there are several pros using this uh, racket in some form, uh, Musetti, and, um, who might be using a different layup, I guess, but, but it's very close. The same mold, and uh, uh, Ferrondolo, Juan Manuel Ferrondolo, 
uh, or Cerundolo, uh, not sure about that one, but they both use this. It's a high quality frame, uh, like the Pure VS, it's become one of those modern classics, I think. And with some weight added, it, it's pretty easy playability still, good power and good feel to this frame. Uh, so if you play with some spin or you, you want a little bit more lift over the net, maybe you're clipping the net a lot with the 1820 rackets, these frames, both the Boom Pro and the Extreme Tour are, are very nice options. They are very close, slightly different sensation when playing, slightly more forgiving Boom Pro, slightly more precise Extreme Tour. Those are my thoughts about these frames. So on the power scale, I would say the Extreme Tour is the most powerful by a tad to the Boom Pro. Then we have the Radical MP, then we have the Radical Pro, and then the Prestige Pro being the most low powered for you more advanced players. Uh, so those are the 98 square inch rackets currently available from Head. They also have a few 99s. They don't have any 97, thank God. And they have a 95, the Prestige Tour, which is uh, more demanding. I talk about that in, the, in my 95 square inch racket video. But this video dealt with 98 square inch rackets from Head. There are five, and this is the lowdown of the power, what they provide in feel and so on. If you're choosing a 98 square inch racket from head, I hope this gave you an idea of which one might work for you. Please let me know in the comments below what other types of videos in this style you would like to see, what other comparisons, uh, let me know. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to support the work I do, check out my affiliates. One of those is Play Your Court. If you have troubles finding a tennis partner or a coach in your area, this is mainly the US for now, but it will open up to other places, I think. You can use my uh, link and get 50% off a membership there and then you have access, easier access to coaches and players. Yeah, my other affiliates, the links are in the description. If you want to buy any of these, check out Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe or Tennis Only. I hope you're well, have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.